Having served in the uh, Canadian Navy for over 32 and a half years and uh, being part of uh, all the hoopla surrounding Sackville in the day and all that, uh, further inspired by Cohen who built the Moose Jaw, which is a ship that uh, his grandfather served on that sunk a certain U-boat or whatever. Um, because uh, we had the, uh, the Sackville in the harbor, which is miles away from where I live, um, I decided, well, I want one of them, and I'm going to build a Sackville. Uh, at the time, I never realized the can of worm that I would open up for myself. <laughs> um, and uh, that was acquired two years ago, and uh, we since embarked on a project, uh, Paul and I, uh, to do uh, the Flower Class Corvette, because Paul was inspired by the movie Compass Rose. And uh, so uh, we decided, yeah, let's, let's give this a whirl. And we called it a project because, uh, <laughs> by the looks of things, it is going to be a long-term project, which I had cautioned Paul uh, of in the beginning. Uh, the beginning. Uh, building a ship is uh, anywhere from six months to whatever, okay? It's not something that we slap together in a matter of days, okay? It's a matter of months and years. <laughs> so... Uh, We've got the Sackville, and through research, Sackville is indeed the last living ship, okay, uh, Corvette in the world. And uh, without getting into all the hoopla, okay, of um, the uh, how she, the negotiations, okay, uh, she was uh, in 1945 uh, after the war. Uh, they wanted to uh, to sink her to make a breakwater, and then in uh, 1957, uh, okay, when her boaters failed, uh, she nearly uh, met her demise once again. And if it wasn't for the uh, the fact that um, they needed another research vessel for Canada and the funds simply were not available, uh, Sackville would have been scrapped in 1970, okay? Uh, so they decided to keep her until 1982, and by that time, uh... Several interest groups uh, had gained a uh, head of steam and all that good stuff into uh, Sackville's preservation, and uh, we are thankful that uh, they they did do it. And uh, every now and again, you get the odd rumble, okay, of uh, you know a Sackville uh, could be scrapped, but uh, they always find the funds, and, and that is a good thing. Uh, not only that, but DND, okay, uh, which is uh, the naval yard, is uh, right down the, the road from where she docks and all that good stuff. And uh, the the government does spend a uh, an inordinate amount of money uh, on her, okay, to uh, fix her. She doesn't go to private shipyards uh, anymore, and so on and so forth. So that is a, that is in interesting. Plus, there's a lot of uh, volunteers, okay, and a lot of them uh, ex Navy. Uh, that uh, look after Sackville, and uh, thank God for that. Uh, in uh, this whole process, back in the day, of uh, what they were going to do, they wanted to, uh, the Nova Scotia Maritime Museum had indicated that they wanted a, uh, a, a war vessel and all that, and there was nothing uh, readily available. I'm just going through the short strokes here of getting rid of some blah, 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 okay? Uh, not really interested. But anyways, they come to find out that uh, there was two Corvettes uh, that were uh, sold uh, to the uh, Dominican Navy back in, uh, after the war or whatever. And uh, those two Corvettes were the Louisbourg and the La Chute. And uh, they were uh, definitely interested in Louisbourg, uh, which, uh, because uh, we have a, a town and named that in, uh, in Nova Scotia, so that was really, really appealing uh, to get her back, and she was uh, uh, an HMCS, she was RCN, so uh, instead of the Sackville. And uh, cutting to the chase on that one, okay, uh, 
they were doing all the leg work and all that, and they were not in good shape, okay? Uh, they were not pre uh, well looked after during those 30 years, okay, in the Dominican and so on and so forth. Uh, there was doubts that the boats could be towed back to Canada and all kinds of other things. And as faith would have it, okay, in August of uh, 1979, Hurricane David swept through the Caribbean, driving Louisbourg ashore and smashing her weakened hull like an eggshell. La Chute was wrecked also. Now there was only Sackville. So that is where uh, Sackville was able to uh, um, remain as part of uh, Canadian heritage and uh, so on and uh, so forth. The initial hope for salvaging a Corvette lay within Cristobal Colon, ex La Chute on the left, and Juan Alejandro Costa, ex Louisburg, on the right, of the Dominican Navy as portrayed in 1976. They were destroyed uh, three years later by Hurricane David. So, in their demise, it made Sackville the only living Corvette in existence in the world. Here is a uh, picture, and uh, this one here is to, she's got the, the short uh, folks hole, of course, and uh, we have an elevated gun up front, but I want to draw your attention to that stick that comes off the stern, and that is known as the ensign staff, and uh, it does not go on the end of the uh, engine room casing as such, okay, it goes on the stern. And here she, uh, another vessel, okay, uh, RCN Corvette, uh, in her full uh, dress uniform, for lack of a better word. Uh, it's known as dressing ship when you install your backbone. A lot of people have portrayed these, uh, these uh, Corvettes uh, with a backbone as part of their rigging. Uh, that is false, okay? Unless you are going to address the ship, okay, with its flags, uh, the backbone is not a permanent fixture on the vessel. Once again, uh, when we look at the uh, the stern of her, she's flying the white ensign, okay, and we see that the staff is attached to the stern of the vessel. Uh, here we have Halifax uh, in early uh, 1942, and she had only been in service for a couple of months, and look how battered she looks. And uh, once again, the instant staff, okay, on the stern, she has a short for uh, foc'sle. Uh, here we have a picture of Sackville, and uh, have a look at, uh, this is earlier on, okay, and uh, this was late 1942, where they installed uh, the Monkey Island on top of the bridge. Okay, she still has an elevated gun, short foc'sle. Uh, the ensign is flying on her stern, of course. And uh, these are the blast shields. Above that, there's another picture that we're going to see later on, uh, is the RN version of those blast shields. And this is where all the ambiguity uh, between modelers uh, surfaces from. And the kit doesn't help. And we're going to see that as well uh, down the road. And I'll explain a few things. Uh, here is a, uh, another shot uh, of uh, the Sackville. Here's those, uh, this is the RN version, okay, of an extended for, uh, Foxo uh, Corvette. Uh, we see that uh, the Monkey Island is no longer there and so on and so forth. And uh, these sheets of canvas, it appears like or whatever, and this is where folks could not figure out what those things were. And modelers are using uh, tissue paper uh, with PVA uh, to try and mimic, okay, uh, what we see here. But uh, every modeler is right. Uh, the part that comes in the kit uh, is totally uh, inaccurate, uh, and it doesn't portray anything. Uh, it could be sheet metal, for the lack of a better word, and that is not what it is. Okay, uh, here's Halifax, okay, following our 1943 refit. As we see, the Monkey Island uh, is uh, no longer there. She's still a, uh, a short folk, so... And uh, the, uh, the Sackville never, ever uh, saw a long folks until uh, the end of the war, and uh, that was short-lived. There we have her, a beautiful uh, rendition uh, 
of uh, the vessel. Okay, all uh, it's going to be a good picture to uh, to do, and this is was uh, her uh, going into Galveston. So I might uh, use this picture. Uh, it's black and white. It's going to be difficult, but nonetheless, uh, to show her uh, the way she was. This is a picture after she came out of uh, Galveston. And I want to draw your attention right above the main gun, uh, on the left of the main gun. And if you look up at the blast shields that are there, and we can see on the left there, you know, against the water, uh, how it does that little L shape, okay? And uh, that is uh, the way things are uh, today. And uh, it is, uh, this is all pipe railing, okay, and uh, the, the sides are three, uh, three pipes, and the front, there's a dip there on both sides. Harder to see on the, the port side, or on the right-hand side of your picture, but nonetheless easily seen on the starboard side, okay, and um, thank God that, that picture is there. And uh, this is the way uh, the Halifax, not the Halifax, but the Sackville, uh, looks today docked uh, in Halifax. Uh, and there she be. And uh, <clears throat> notice um, how she'd been streamlined, uh, the supports for the bridge and so on and so forth, uh, compared to the kit part and uh, whatever. But this is the Sackville. That is that on the, the short uh, story of the Sackville, and um, as time goes by, uh, we may do uh, another discussion uh, on this, uh, because like I said, <clears throat> I want to preserve as much uh, information as I can, and I want to share as much information as I possibly can, and have that in uh, the build log, for the lack of a better word. So uh, without further ado, uh, thanks for watching, folks. Switcher, signing off.